early legendary tournament, the early stages of it. How did it come about on the um, putting it together, starting with the, just the general thought of it and the various steps that led up to this exciting event which began today? Well, actually, it, uh, it's not specifically to love it, but it's about chess for professional plays in general. Uh, when Susan asked me to join her back in 2001 to help change the mentality of the professional plays and how, prof uh, how companies view the professional plays and trying to get more, I would say, better conditions and, and better tournaments for the players, you know, I thought it was a very interesting idea because I didn't play a lot of chess in America, but I did travel to Europe and I played chess in Asia. And it is a very different brand of chess. You know, here, as you said, people play for fun and a lot of big Swiss events, but over there, they view professional plays more of, you know, what you would see like a doctor, a lawyer, very well respected. And, and it really bothered me that a lot of chess players here in America, especially world-class players, don't have the same respect. So that where the idea of forming this you know, prestigious event came about. And the first one that I worked with Susan was a 2001 Mass Cup. And actually we have three players in this tournament playing in that tournament, uh, which include Irina Crush, Eugene Parishteen, and um, Dimitri Schneider. Oh. And in that tournament also have the young Hikaru Nakamura at that time. So it was a very interesting you know, and fun event. And uh, we liked the results of it. We even got Mayor Giuliani to come to open the event, and of course... Future President Giuliani? Well, perhaps. And, and we also had the Sports Commission of New York City, Mr. Kent Bonziba, coming for the opening and the closing ceremony. So we felt that this was something that we could do, you know, and continue to support. Then the next one came as, you know, you and your brother were the, you know, the, the, the chief, you know, arbiter for the New York City's Mass Cup. Now this one is with Mayor Bloomberg instead of Mayor Giuliani. And that was the strongest, you know, round robin tournament in the history of the USCF. But that was only a rapid event. So when we moved to Lubbock, Texas, we wanted to have something similar to this. And that's how the idea came about. We thought that this is a good place to have a tournament. And especially having the kind of support that we have from the entire university and the local community, which is very, very important. I mean, as you saw today, basically all the top people or the most important people from the university came to support the event. So we hope that this is not going to be the first and the last, but it's going to be a long line of tournaments like this. And hopefully, eventually, we can raise more money to have maybe category 13, 14, 50, as they do in Europe. <laughs> hey, I haven't been to chess in Europe. Do they, is it particularly uh, um, competitive and, and vicious um, effort to get invited to a round robin? Well, it's actually, it's kind of tough because, you know, just like here in America, and the problem is, I would say, even bigger in Europe because there are so many good players and there are very limited amount of, you know, what you call prestigious, you know, invitational events. So how do you choose one player versus another? Who do you choose to invite and who not to invite? So sometimes it comes down to personality, sometimes it comes to, you know, the style of play, you know, because some organizers may choose to go with some, you know, I would say more fighting players versus the people who may not fight as much, you know, so it's, it's, it's a tough, you know, battle to have to overcome. But here in America, like I said before, we don't have enough of these events. When we were doing research about you know, what kind of international uh, events we have, round robin events we have in America, in terms of category 11 or 12 or 13, and we were very, very surprised to find out that there are very few of them. I mean, take a look at the state of Texas. The last time there's a category 12 was in 1972 in San Antonio. I mean, you talk about 30 something years ago, you know, and, and in terms of in this country, we had, you know, an incredible tournament at the Mechanics Institute in San Francisco. We have an event sponsored by the Chessina School, but there are very you know, few events, what we call top of the line events like this. So we hope that, that this would give something to look forward to for a lot of the fans in America. And around the world using Monroe. And around the world using Monroe. Fantastic. Absolutely. Device yes. that 
really spreads the chess enthusiasm. You know, because there are other technologies that people can use to broadcast the game. I mean, there are other choices. But the difference between Monroe and other products is that, especially for an organizer, it's a lot easier to put away this product and set them up versus having to carry these big, gigantic boards, you know. It's a little bit different, you know. And also the other ones, you have to hook it up on, you know, maybe many computer terminals. And here, basically, everything can be done individually with this unit. So I, I, I like the product, and I see that being a way to make chess more popular for people to follow online. And I think the players are comfortable with the yes. handheld device. Actually, it, it's a big change, I say, in my opinion, in the last few years, because I remember attending one of the inaugural events sponsored by Monroe in Montreal a few years ago. And these were, I believe, were still the prototype. You know, it's a much larger, more bulky unit. And, you know, some people were like saying, well, you know, they, they have questions about this unit and, and they were very afraid to try, they were very afraid to use it. But now it's, it's a big difference. Now a lot more people are comfortable with it. Once they try, they see how, how much easier it is. Now, in my personal opinion, let's say, for example, when you get into time pressure, let's say you record the move, okay? You have to write, let's say, knight F3. So that's three, you know, letters that you have to write. Knight, the N, the F, and the three. With the Monroe unit, it's only two click on the mouse, I mean, on, on the stylus. So you one piece and go to the, another square. So actually, it's a lot faster to record the time, especially for, uh, uh, during time pressure. So I, th I think it's very, very good, and I like it a lot. And with the 30-second add-on, it's forever. These games don't get lost and yes, and are unretrievable. It only takes seconds to you know a second maybe less to record a move, so you still have plenty of time with the increments. Well, Paul, we have action going on in the next room. Perhaps we need to go in there and and uh, experience it along with the Monroy people throughout the world.